Hello and welcome back to Payday 2 101, I'm your host as always, Madrai Brad. We're on day two of the 2015 Crime Fest so far at the time of recording this, and there have been some major and controversial updates, and my inbox has been exploding with messages asking for my opinions on everything, so I thought I'd say them here while I have a chance. I also have some major news for the future of Payday 2 101, but let me catch you up on Crime Fest 2015 first. Remember, this video is only being done on day two of Crime Fest, so any of this stuff is subject to change. First, every weapon has been rebalanced. This is something we've been asking for for a very long time, as the game has had issues with some weapons being leagues better than the rest since launch. I haven't had time to go testing weapons since the update, since I've been pretty busy, but from what I've seen so far, they completely overhauled the stability and accuracy statistics to give themselves more room to make weapons different. I like this decision, however, it will take quite a while to figure out exactly what the new accuracy and stability translates to, as it seems to work quite differently. Previously, 18 accuracy was perfect aim for many weapons when using their scope. However, now it seems that 60 accuracy is considered high for your average gun. So, as you can tell right there, they've changed things a lot. This has the extremely unfortunate side effect of rendering every single weapon guide video I've ever done useless. I'm going to have to redo them all. I'm sure that some of them are still pretty accurate, as I've been reading stats on some weapons and they seem similar, however I'd rather be safe than sorry. You never know when things that aren't written down like reload speed, visual recoil, and hip fire spread have been changed on a gun unless you test it, so I do plan to redo my tests on every single gun. It's also worth pointing out that the statistics on paper no longer lie with you, they don't round up or round down, which does make it a little bit easier to test, because that really did slow down my testing, having to test every number to make sure it was actually telling me the truth. Unfortunately, due to my very poor living and financial conditions at the moment, I have very rarely had chances to record videos, and when I do, I can't afford to spend days on a well-researched weapon guide video when I could instead cut up a live stream and get weeks worth of video out of it, and I refuse to rush a weapon guide video without taking the time to properly research it. Payday 2 101 will continue, but it'll be very difficult to find time for it for the time being. The other massive update, and this is the controversial one, is that weapon skins have been added to the game through a safe dropping system, where sometimes when you win heists, safes can be awarded when you flip your card. These will go into your Steam inventory and you can open them with drills in a key system. To be clear, these are not in-game drills like you'd use to open safes in heists, but this is instead like a key and crate system similar to what you see in games such as Counter-Strike and Team Fortress 2. These drills can be bought with real money or traded for with the Steam community, just as you would Steam cards or other Steam inventory items from games. The skins in the saves cosmetically look very bright and different from default guns, and carry with them extremely minor stat boosts. This is mostly controversial for three reasons. One, people don't like that there are stat boosts on the skins. Two, is that people think it's greedy for Payday 2 to put a system in where people can pay for skins. And three, they feel like they've been lied to because two and a half years ago Overkill said that they don't want to put microtransactions in Payday 2. I'll respond to all of these. About the skins, I personally would like it if they were purely cosmetic. However, I looked at the stat boosts and they're extremely minor. They will never change your gameplay in any measurable amount that can't easily be overcome by getting better at the game. I understand the worry, but look at the skin bonuses yourself, and often is one or two points in something minor like stability. For people who think it's greedy, Overkill Software has massively grown and expanded over the course of Payday 2's life. It was a very small studio that was hardly able to make a few DLC packs before it started getting massive. Now they're far bigger than before, and they come out with a heist or two every month or two. The amount of new content and the speed they give it is staggering, and them having a second source of income that doesn't harm the community in any way is great. It just means that everyone will get to enjoy the new things they make with the money they get from this, even if you didn't buy the crates and the keys. This is a good thing. And lastly, to people who are upset that two and a half years ago Overkill said in an article they don't want microtransactions in Payday 2, that was two and a half years ago. The company has changed and Payday 2 has changed. They couldn't have any idea that the game would be as massive as it is, with as many players as it has. With company expansion comes for a need for new revenue to continue to keep the game interesting. I wouldn't judge a human on something they said two and a half years ago because things change. It seems silly to me to hold Overkill Software to such a ridiculous standard. A few people have claimed that during the Crime Fest lead-up, Overkill Software promised that everything would be free and that they broke it. In reality, they just took a statement that was said on their page wildly out of context. 
What they actually said was, every feature that is unlocked during Crime Fest is released for free for the entire community of Payday 2. So they not only never made a promise, but they never lied at all. Every feature thus far has been unlocked for free for the entire community of Payday 2. The drills for the safes are not a feature, nor are they not free. You can choose to pay money if you want to, but you can also get them from drops or trade for them. This whole controversy just comes across to me as people getting upset over change like usual and wanting to make whoever made the change look like the bad guys. Overkill have not lied, they've done nothing malicious, and they've added a new game feature that they think will help fund the continued growth of the game. If it works, we'll get a better game, and if it doesn't, they'll probably just remove it. There's nothing to be upset about. That's it for this Payday 2 101 update. Like I said earlier in the episode, I'm in a bad way when it comes to finances and living condition. If you want to know all the details on that, the video on the left explains it all in the shortest amount of time that I can. It's a complex situation, so you'll have to bear with me. If you want to check out something else, though, the video on the right is of me wrestling Shrek. That's about all the context that I'm willing to give. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description if you want to keep up with me, give the video a like if you want to promote it, and subscribe to me if you'd like to watch more. Check out my Patreon page in the description if you feel like donating monthly and getting rewards in return such as being whitelisted in the community Minecraft server, and until next time, have a nice day.